Jamaica tonight is the night that I come on my political platform and I give that endorsement. I give the endorsement tonight, Jamaica, for a better Jamaica. I give an endorsement for better hospitals. I give an endorsement tonight for the garbage that is not being collected on time. I give an endorsement for better schools and politicians not robbing from our children's coffers. I give an endorsement tonight, Jim. You know, I should leave this for tomorrow night. I will not be sold out and will not be bribed by the system that I inherited. The system wronged me. And I said something earlier. I'll not be used by another parliament here and a politician. I've developed my system of immunity that I might endorse you today, but I'll not put myself at that place where you think that you can use, abuse, and tear me apart. Mark Goley, I've endorsed you tonight. But the truth be told, I will be your worst nightmare in the interest of Jamaica. Andrew Holness, you have gotten eight years and you have still proven to the Jamaican people that you're not solid. I will not be for sale in the interest of my country. This country has a lot of opportunities. We're ranked 78 in the world right now as this poor, a poor country. But the truth be told, the wealth that is in this country is beyond. The wealth that is in this country, put Mr. Ratigan back on it. The wealth that is on this country is one that can be shared for all. And when I look at the people in Waterhouse that Mr. Ratigan sits, every night he comes on this program. When I look at the people at Clifton, when I look at the people down in Montego Bay, in Riversdale, in Moko, all of these places that has been without water, when I look at the $1.7 trillion that has been unaccounted for, and your office of the Prime Minister is in it, it begs me to question about the system of accountability. And we're big on accountability on this platform. We're big on the issue of transparency on this platform. Very big. People like Mr. Rattigan spoke about the issue of the inflation rate. See now, Jamaica, the BOJ coming out and saying that the inflation rate, for the, they, 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 they regret to talk about the, the, bus, the bus system that they said that would not be affected by inflation. Now they're saying it's going to be affected by inflation. And you're going to say that the Bank of Jamaica uh, head still is the governor of the bank with those miscalculated errors. You have put in place inflation rate, and then on top of that, you reduce the cost of bus fare on JUTC, already knowing the fact that JUTC is strapped for cash. Already knowing the fact that JUTC is under-resourced and illiquid, and you are going to say to the people of Jamaica that it can it can go because of inflation, and then two months down the line after you do it, you're going to come back and say you made a mistake, and we must accept that as what is it? nowhere else in the world the governor could make those mistakes and still be governor today. Mr. Ratigan, how can a governor make those fundamental mistakes and still be governor after he know that JUTC is one of, JUTC is in billions worth of debts? 
And you're going to say you want to put JUTC part fifty dollar and seventy dollar, and then say, oh, it matches inflation, and then you come back to it telling us that JUTC. When say but it's when put on top. It's slackness this, and it hurt me because them do it for a political ploy in this country. Them do it for get election votes, and people must know that they could manage it. It's going to cost you and your children more. It's not Nigel Clark paying the debt. It's me and you paying that debt. We paying those debts, Jamaica. We paying those debts. And Nigel Clark can manipulate the government and the bank. And nothing comes out of it other than an apology. Which governor could have been a political ploy? To a minister to come and then apologize. You guys don't understand in Jamaica. They did this say, fear of be fifty dollar. Come yes. April, Mister Ratti, can you hear about it? Yes. And yes. now we're seeing this kind of thing now, where they're coming out to say it never matched the inflation rate the right way and it was an error. Come on, Mister Ratti, can burn some fire tonight, pandem. Well, you know what? The role playing was great. But what it what I'm hoping that it mm. displayed was that you can't defend the indefensible. You yes. cannot defend the indefensible. And I hope people walk away from the role playing we just did, knowing that, and I hope it registers and it resonates with them that if you are a if you're a bad leader, if you're a bad manager, if you're a bad person. Sometimes there's no redemption. There's no True. hope. You, you put yourself in that position only to be slaughtered again, only to be taken advantage of again. And so I agree with you. All these things that we're seeing, they're done for political purposes. We hear about we hear about the the economic growth for the for sustained economic growth for 10 months. But ask the people who are making minimum wage, ask them if they're feeling the benefit if they're experiencing the benefit of that uh, of the of, of that economic growth they're not ask them about this prosperity doctrine if it's trickling down to them they're not remember this is the same prime minister who said that the purpose of the one of the, one of the main purposes of the jlp party is to move people from the poor class and the poverty class into the middle class mm. ask all of the minimum wage people at, for going back to 2016 how many of you have moved from the poor class and the poverty class to the middle class as a result of, uh, of, of action taken by the prime minister and his government. Very, 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 very few, if any, very few. And so, you know, I don't think I can improve upon what you just said and what you just, you know, the, 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 the expression of hopelessness, the passion that you brought to what you just said. It should have a ripple effect on people. It should, because a lot of them, a lot of us, we feel the same way. But for some reason, we can't get ourselves to come out in, in unison with a united voice and just say the things them like what you just said. Part of that is because of fear. Because if you if you if you criticize a prime minister, we have seen from experience what happens. You're brought before a camera and you're made, you're you're you know, you're 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 abused, in fact. Yet still, we have a top 200 list of criminals and we can't find them. We can't find them. But if you if you go and you criticize the prime minister, they will find you. They will spare no expense, no tactic, no strategy to find you. They will find you. And you can start. You, you look at all, If you look at all of the ministries you just mentioned, information, mm. foreign affairs and foreign trade, national security, health and wellness, um education finance and the public service and 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 um minister 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 without portfolio in the office of the uh prime minister all of these they're all failures people when you have a prime minister prime minister the prime minister's job is not a simple job not a simple job you have a lot of things to worry about a lot of moving parts and at the at the the, the pinnacle of it is your people. You have to take care of your people. 
So your responsibility is vast. So why the hell would you take on 19 agencies in a your, in a your office? Why? Mm. Why you take on 19 agencies? And then you take on agencies responsible for giving permits to people like your wife. Why? Because even if people cannot prove corruption, there is the appearance of corruption, and that is equally as bad as the corruption. True. Why? And then you come and you talk all this nonsense, and you you and what all oh, people when I'm tell you about all of these international financial agencies and organizations, give Jamaica a clean bill of health. All that they're saying is Jamaica is paying. The, the outstanding debts on time. That's all they're saying. That's all they're saying. And how is Jamaica doing that? Jamaica is doing that by squeezing, squeezing the poor. And while they're squeezing the poor, they're borrowing. And like Andre said, who's going to pay back that debt? Who? You, your children, your grandchildren. Let me give you a quick example of how cruel this government is. They went out in COVID, and mo some of you have heard me talk about this already. And they took out, I think it was half a billion dollars worth of loans from the IMF, the IDB, and the World Bank. Mm. And the money came for two, for two, two communities. Come for the business community mm. to keep the economy afloat, and, and it came for poor people. And what did the government do for poor people? Instead of making it easy for poor people to get the money, they made it difficult. They say, well, you have to have an account with a bank. You have to have access to the internet because remember it was during COVID. And you yes. have to have this, and you have to have that, and you have to this. Most poor people now have the things you're going to ask about. So guess what happened? We don't have any accountability regarding that money. And remember, loans, not grants. It have, True. Do, those monies must be paid back. And here is the, here is, here is the thing that really, really hurt me the poor people for whom the money came a lot of them didn't receive the money but they are going to have to make a contribution to pay it back them are them pitney are them pitney pitney they are going to so i don't understand this money come for you you don't get it but you're going to have to go help pay it back the loan where the country get and, and by the way there is very little accountability for the money. So what we are trying to do with the One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation and other groups within the diaspora is we are, we are holding the government accountable. So we are going to the people who give out the loans them and the people who give out the grants and we are saying, listen, we believe that some chopping took place. So we need yes. you to come here and we need Add you to request them. Exactly. We're asking for, for a, um, a financial audit. That's what we're asking for, because we believe we don't we don't believe that the money was spent appropriately. We don't believe that. We believe some of that money. I won't name some of the places because I already know where some of the money is. All right, I know where some of the money. Is. And by the way, a lot of that money is not in Jamaica. Not in Jamaica, and so people it grieves me to no end when people call me and them say, "Boy, we had so far we had sent our money, mm. sent our this, sent our that." It's just this week, me have to send money to people because people say, boy, I just need a dinner. How, you know, often, how often they call it, Mr. Rettigan? If I tell you, very often. Tonight, tonight, a virgin of mine, a man reached out to me and said to me, say, listen, he said, if I never feel you, I would not eat tonight. Me and my wife and my pick name would not be eating dinner tonight. Wow.